Today, I want to show you one of the best web UIs for stable diffusion that I have ever seen. It is super easy to set up and it is very intuitive to use. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So I'm talking about Invoke AI. This is a new web interface. They're super dedicated. They are very helpful. By the way, here are the amazing news. This was developed to run on Windows, Mac and Linux, also for GPUs with as little as four gigabyte of RAM. So if you have an older card, you can still use this UI. And I want to show you right now how easy it is to set this up. Go to this page where you can download the install script for Invoke AI. Scroll down and here you have install scripts for Linux, for Mac and also for Windows. I downloaded this one here. And once the download is finished, you want to unpack that zip file. In the zip file is a folder called Invoke AI. You want to copy that folder anywhere you want to have it on your hard drive. For simplicity, I put mine on C, Users, Username of your Windows account, and then you can see here is my folder. Inside of that folder, you first want to run the file Winlock Paths Enable. This enables you to use longer paths on Windows and will add a new entry to the registry. So when this is done, it just takes a second. You want to next click on the install bed. This is going to open up your command line and the install is taking quite some time. So give it some time and then it will go into a mode where it is asking you inside of that command window some questions about the setup. It will explain to you what the questions mean and you make the decisions for what you think is best. Then it's going to download the models for you for 1.5 and 1.5 in paint to put them in the correct folders inside of Invoke AI. After that, just to be on the safe side, I restarted my computer. Inside of the Invoke AI folder, you will now find a invoke.bat. Double click on that and it will start to load in this command window. The command window has to stay open and you know it's finished loading when you see here the point to your browser with this local address. Copy that over into your browser address up here, hit enter and then it's loading the interface. That's how easy that is. Now here comes the amazing part. They built a lot of functionality into that web UI. So I want to show you here on the left side, you have a text to image mode, very intuitive to use. You have an image to image mode. That's also very practical. Then the best part is you have a unified canvas. You can do out painting here. This is the best working out painting I have ever seen. So you can get crazy good results with the first roll with the second roll. I didn't take as long as with automatic 1111. This works a lot better. They will also add a note mode where you can connect different modes to generate your images. I can't even imagine how amazing this is going to be. They will have a post processing mode. So that's going to be mind blowing. And they also want to have training here for textual inversion and also dream booth right here in this interface. And they say you can do textual inversion right now using the main script. If you're not sure how to use scripts, just wait for them to update the UI. Now let's go back here to our text to image and have a look at the left side. You can see up here there is a prompt area. And by the way, if you want to have a negative prompt, simply put that into square brackets. That's the negative prompt. The invoke button will render your prompt. And here you have a cancel button in red. Below that you have the set how many images you want. This is basically how many roles you want to have in one go. How many steps you want to use. The CFG scale means how close it sticks to the prompt. You have the width, the height, you have here the samplers. The K in front of the sample method is just a reference to the developer of these methods, but it's the same methods you find in Automatic 1111. Then you have these pop out menus with different settings and you have this little question mark that explains to you what the settings means. This is so great and intuitive so you can understand it right away. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can set up here that you can turn on and can turn off. For example, face restoration and also upscaling. You can also do face restoration and upscaling after you've created the image. Let's look at the buttons up here. The first one is send and here you can send Send it to image to image to the unified canvas. You can copy the link. This is not a link that will work online. It's only a local link and you can also download that image, which means you can save it wherever you want on your drive. 
Next, you have a viewer, which is great because it hides the settings on the side. And with your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out of the image to get a better view at what you have. When you click on that again, you're back in your editing mode. From that image, you can use the prompt, you can use the seat, you can use all together. Here you have the face restore and there is the upscaling. Next, you have an info button, which is really useful. You click on that and it shows you a full list of all the settings and then also the command down here that was used in the CMD, which is this black window here. And of course you have a delete button if you don't want to have that image. On the side here, you have a gallery of all the images you have recently rendered. And by the way, this interface is consistent to when you restart it, unless you delete the cache, which means the, the memory of your browser, this will be consistent. So when you restart the UI, you will see these from the last session. Up here, you can switch between the different models if you want to. You have hotkeys to work faster with the interface. Absolutely mind blowing. You can report bugs if you find them. There is a GitHub link and also, and this is really important, if you have any problems, click up on that link here for the official Discord, join it. The team is online, they are very helpful. Their community is super helpful and positive. So join the Discord right now. And then you have here some overall settings for the web UI. The in-paint mode has a lot of the same things on the left and on the top. You can drag an image in here. You can also click on upload to load it from your drive. And then you can just start creating variations or rendering from an image that you have loaded. If you want to do in painting or out painting, you want to go to the unified canvas. And now look at this magical thing. Here is what I've rendered and I took eight different steps here around the image. The one in the middle is my core image. You can see how consistent the city has been built around that core image. But now look at that. I can zoom out with my mouse wheel and see how big that canvas is. It's basically endless. You can go here and build a really, really big render if you want to. If you want to get back to where you are, click here on the reset view or press R on your keyboard and this will bring you back to your image. Now, when you're here in the move tool mode, which is V on the keyboard, you have here this square. When you touch it on the outer lines, you can move it around to set it where you want to render next. And when you grab it here on these handles, you can resize it and you can see here it will show you the size in pixels on how big that square is. Now, here's an important thing. If you make this box very small, this will render in a smaller resolution and the result will not be so great. So what you want to do here is to go down here to infill and scaling and set a higher scale for that box. So this box is rendered in a higher resolution and then scaled down to that part of the image. So you still get a high quality result. I would highly suggest to you if you do out painting here that you put the box with a lot of overlap so the AI can see the image where you're coming from and then the area that you want to extend. So let's render a part on the side here real quick so you can see it in action. Click on Invo and it's going to show you this noise pattern here that is slowly turning into an image. And you can see that it created here a larger building in the foreground and two characters standing in front. Now you can agree to that by accept with the hook down here, or you can delete this by discard. You can also over here on the left side with the amount of images, render multiple images at the same time. And with these arrows down here, you can go between the image versions that will have been created, decide whatever you want. And if you're ready, you click down here and accept. But then if you would decide, well, I actually don't want that, click here and undo and it will go back through the steps, as you can see. Also up here, you have a lot of different tools, for example, a brush that you can use to paint in colors. And you can also use it to create a mask where you can either mask the area you want to change or when you click here, you can mask the area you want to preserve. You have an eraser tool to delete parts of the image. You have an infill that fills that whole square with a solid color. You can delete the content of that square. You can color pick and that is so useful because if you want to paint what you want to have a kind of a composition in the scene you want to extend it is best if you use the original colors you find here in that image. So you give the AI kind of an idea what kind of composition you want to have what kind of elements you want to have in here. 
but you can also in the brush options pick your own color set the opacity and also set the size of the brush over here you can merge all of the visible parts together you can save it to the gallery which is here on the right side you can copy it to the clipboard, which is great because then you can copy it into any other app, for example, Photoshop or Affinity Photo. You can download it to save it on your drive. And here you can undo. And these undos are unlimited as much as your computer can handle. So you can go back a hundred steps or a thousand steps if you want to. You can, of course, also upload images that you want to change with the AI, for example, for in painting. And here are some specific settings for the unified canvas. And here, if you want to, you can also clear the canvas history if your computer is getting slow and you have worked for on a project for a pretty long time. You will find a lot more settings over here on the left side. Again, mouse over that question mark symbol. It will explain to you what the settings in this area are. I am absolutely amazed by this web UI. I want you to try it out today. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.